6,110 pounds, a North Trail 25 LRSS coming in here at Halid RV of Goldwater, Michigan. That uh, <laughs> model number's a little misleading, makes you think it's a little shorter than it actually is, but it does still fall well within the confines of comfortable half-ton towability. And guys, this is truly fitting of the phrasing like new. Uh, this is actually one of three trades from the previous owner. They're swapping this trailer, a fifth wheel, and a truck, all for a motorhome here at Halid RV, basically condensing everything that they had. I think that they had like a couple seasonal sites, basically, and now they're doing some traveling, in case you were curious as to why. So you might have seen this on the market under a different name. Uh, there's a private label version of this called Mallard, just in, you know, just as a sort of for instance, for reference thing. And uh, instead of standing out here with me talking, why don't we hop inside? But before we get opened up, we'll take a look at her in travel mode. And I do believe this one is pretty darn turtle friendly. If I gave it a, you know, a elementary school grade, I'd give this one an A- minus for travel accessibility. Um, you can get to everything. Uh, whether you use the rear door, like I just did, or the front door, you can get to everything. All of the kitchen storage, all that stuff. The uh, reason I say A-, minus. The drawers are a little tricky to get to, not the end of the world. Their fridge is a little tricky to get to, not the end of the world. But you do have to go outside and around to get up to the bed in the bath. Kind of like those kitchen drawers, kind of like that refrigerator. Is this end of the world? I don't know. I don't really think so. I think that if I'm just trying to make a quick travel stop or pack the camper, the fact that I can still get in here and access everything I think that means a little more to me. Now, I did notice, like, this has a nice little positive latch system here, but the previous owner did throw some Velcro on the wall to keep that door from jiggling around. Maybe it was just wobbling too much in transit and they wanted to strap it down. But the fact that they did that, you know, they took that extra precaution as opposed to just letting it jiggle bang around all over the place. Well, I think that's a, a sign of good ownership right there. Now, if you're a regular Halo RV viewer, I think this layout's going to look pretty darn familiar. The uh, the North Trail series, you know, just to kind of give you an idea, historically, like, what was it? And historically, it was Heartland's attempt to take on the Keystone Passport, which has been just an absolute leader in the lightweight business for a long time. But in recent years, the uh, Coachman Freedom Express has also really surged up in popularity. And this has really kind of morphed into the Heartland Freedom Express, if you will. Like, you might notice this is a, a near match for the 279 RLDS Liberty Edition Freedom Express we have here. And in point of fact, this is even the Caliber Edition upgraded uh, North Trail. So even that sort of behavior ha has been mirrored. There's a duality there. Now, uh, there's a lot of lamination going on this thing. Basically, the whole RV is effectively laminated. The roof, the walls, the floor... Everything on this is all laminated, aluminum framed. I do like that they put a lot of lights in this. This being their upscale line of North Trails, I guess you could say, they did dress it up, and I think it does, generally speaking, uh, you know, meet the the role. Um, the uh, TV here can swing out, so if you do want to make it face the uh, theater seat recliners in the back a little bit more directly, you absolutely can. And good execution of theater seat side breeze windows. You might notice as we pan around, how uh, the windows on both sides of that theater seat back there will open right up for airflow. I like the big side stands on both sides. Um, I do like how they have storage below them. I like how they have power outlets for phone charge and whatnot. We are looking at uh, T-molded countertops everywhere but the kitchen area, which is a nice solid surface. But, you know, that's fine. There's, there's the different, like, you know... A, uh, a lot of brands have used a uh, sealed edge thermal foil material now on, on non-kitchen areas. I, again, Freedom Express being one of those. And that's that's like a better, uh, you know, sort of application. But there's nothing wrong with what I see here. That's the difference between good and better. And I think that's a really important lesson to kind of wrap your head around when you are looking at RVs. That is a six cubic foot fridge freezer. The telltale giveaway is that extra pocket above. Although, speaking of above, I like the storage above that dinette. That is pretty effective. Uh, the, this dinette is not like a full 44 inches deep like a lot of uh, big U dinettes are. But it is pretty easy to get in and around. So it's really more of like a two adult dinette rather than like a three or four type person dinette. Simply because the benches aren't quite as deep. 
So you're always kind of fighting for leg space. You could probably get three people in there, no problem. You're definitely not going to do four unless you've got a couple kids on those back benches. Um, there is a power outlet down there under that as well. It's a little hard to see because of the, the darker wood tone scheme that they have going through these. That being said, I don't know if you call this like a, you know, espresso or something like that. A, a, a dark sort of walnut uh, kind of decor theme going on. But it does have a, a very like executive look and feel to it for sure so a little bit of a pantry tainment center here and frankly it's pretty deep that's a good chunk of storage right there down below it you see that intervac thing above the little pet dishes that you can pop out now if you don't care about the pet dishes you can take out that plastic insert and voila it's just a drawer which is cool but um you got a little central vacuum system here i would prefer it if the collection point were actually in the like pass-through storage so that when you're done you don't have to worry about you know emptying anything in here but you know it works it's better than nothing so that's that that's something to be said there the uh, kitchen counter here these very popular l counters it's kind of funny keystone had been doing these l counters for like five years and then all of a sudden somebody shoved it against a wall instead of on a peninsula and it's like the first time anybody ever saw it. it just it, just an interesting observation that i've noticed after you know doing this for a long time the kitchen area in the Caliber series here does have those uh, solid surface counters, and you see flush mount sink covers and stove cover gives you a good prep space here. And how about those easy reach appliance outlets? Let's definitely hear it for the boys on that one. And now that song is stuck in my head. Fantastic. Anyway, we've got a pair of bigger drawers as opposed to uh, two or three smaller ones. Just a little variance there. Cherokee does that quite a bit also. Um, and hey, obviously we have a spot for a wastebasket. Now the uh, cabinetry is all pocket screwed. You can see how they do put hidden hinges here in the Caliber series just to kind of dress it up. You've also got an extra wide door here through the walkthrough bathroom. This is really the one area where this floor plan, in terms of the layout, significantly differs from the Freedom Express. The Freedom Express has a walk-around privatized bathroom so that if someone's in the bathroom, it doesn't cut the trailer in half, whereas this one has a, uh, a larger looking and feeling, but equally functioning, walk-through bathroom. It does make the camper look and feel a little bit bigger. You also have a nice chunk of linen space on the right. As I pan to the left, simple but effective medicine cabinet. I do like that extra counter storage that kind of crawls along the wall over there though. Another of those little bit wider doors brings us up here to the bedroom where you've got our walk around queen. Um, nothing too like out of the ordinary to report in the bedroom. It is an easier area to see the uh, laminated ceilings little mini vault originally kind of pioneered by the Rockwood family actually. They were one of the first ones to do that. I do kind of like how they do their side stands here though. Um, if you notice, you've got your dual side stance. And also, notice how these corners are rounded so you're not going to gouge your arm or something like that if you roll over at night. But since these are a little bit open air, if you're claustrophobic, you don't feel like you're sleeping in the camper coffin. And it's easy to miss. But down here on the left, you can just see the outline of that power outlet. And then there's a little storage pocket there. The storage pocket's a little tricky to get into. you got to kind of crawl over there to get it. But it's there, and it's not a bad spot to keep little personal effects and objects that you want kind of out of sight and out of mind. And just because I've been doing this a really long time, and I really know what I'm looking for, I can tell that this RV was parked where there were things like pine needles, but I can also tell that it wasn't just like left there and abandoned. It was kept extremely clean. Now, you see there's a full weight distribution and anti-sway system over there in that far corner. And by the way, as long as you're in here, your power jacks button, your four corner power stabilizer jacks, the buttons for those are inside of this magnet hold back slam latch compartment. Those are all cool, cool things. So ideal for first timers here, or if you're getting rid of the family bunkhouse, and uh, you know you want to get into a couple's camper. The hitch represents you know some money that you're probably not going to have to spend. Now you know I should I should maybe explain. I don't know the details of this purchase right now. I am un operating under the assumption that that hitch is going to be included with this trailer since the owner no longer has a truck or a trailer. Uh, it would not hurt to contact our team to verify. Sometimes owners will keep their hitching and like give it to one of their kids or something. So before I go guaranteeing that, I'd rather put that out there. 
The uh, nose cap on the front, you see that three-quarter nose cap? I do like how it wraps around the sidewalls. I think that's a smart thing. It keeps, uh, it's kind of like a, a motorhome overhead classy uh, sort of cab thing where they put the seams in an area of low stress instead of high stress. So power awning, power tongue jack, four corner power stabilizer jacks. Those are a lot of push button, easy fun operations. We do have an enclosed heated underbelly. You can see our black flush outside shower all right next to the sewer area there, sort of a convenience courtesy station. And in case you're curious, this is something Heartland started doing around 2011. These little black flapper doodles, that's not a technical term, <laughs> obviously. But the fact is, uh, what, you know, why are they there? Well, to make sure those slide wiper seals flip in and out the way that they're supposed to. Heartland just takes a couple extra little pieces of trim, puts them on the sides of the slide out, and you know what? It works just fine, works pretty well. Uh, we do have an all aluminum structure, a ton of lamination goes into this product. It does have a, uh, a walkable roof structure. You see the uh, cargo uh, rack on the back here, about a 200 pound capacity on that. That is not inclusive of the spare tire though, so you will need to deduct the spare tire's uh, weight from that bumper rating or backup camera ready. I already mentioned the power awning, but it is an easy tilt awning, and this thing really does have a nice open middle patio space. Now you see that larger entry handle, that in conjunction with the LCI stable step over here means easy coming and going, and it also means that the trailer won't rock and roll around as people bop in and out of the trailer. Now there's no grill included with it, but I did notice down here that there is a uh, little grill quick connect. So, um, you know, if you wanna hop out the main door, you know, flip the steak or tend to the burgers or something like that, and then uh, hop back inside. You got a nice little spot for it. Now this trailer, like I said, it's longer than the 25 foot model uh, numerator wants you to believe, but that's why the wide stance stability axles here are pretty handy. Uh, it helps you cheat the wheelbase on things like half tons or the, the bigger, because you could theoretically tow this with like one of the larger class SUVs. You certainly don't want it in something like a, you know, a Ford Escape, <laughs> but you know, a big expedition theoretically might be able to handle this uh, properly and safely. I'm pretty happy with what I see, actually. This is a sharp, sharp trade. I just don't think they were using it much. So give us a call. Hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything in between. We do it all at Halo RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.